Do you want to sell your house for absolute top dollar? Here's three things you have to do to maximize profits before you list your house. Number one. What is it, Sam? You gotta stage it. A lot of debate on this one. Do I need to stage my house? Well, if it looks like crap. Yes, you do. And even if it looks pretty good, I think you kind of need to do a little bit. You do. I'm not saying it's the right process. A lot of ways to skin a cat, as they say. So whether it's, man, the house is totally empty. Gotta have somebody come in, stage the whole thing. Couches, beds, pillows, flowers, everything. So a lot of people, they think, oh, well, my house looks really good the way it is. And a lot of houses do look really good. But those little differences, you know, flowers on the kitchen island, place settings on the table, lay out the white plates, napkins rolled up, knives, forks, all that stuff. It just makes a house look more like a house in a magazine that just resonates with people. Not only when they're walking around looking at the house, today's marketing, so much about photography, video, making the house look good online. And that goes a long, long way, man. Also, depersonalizing oh. your home. You have to. Why? If you want to sell your home for top dollar, you have to make a buyer visualize themselves in that home as if it's their own, even though it's not theirs yet. The picture wall with all the kids and grandkids. 22 and, years old swimming lesson. Yeah. Ellie on a horse when she's seven. Absolutely adorable. I love seeing them, but a buyer's not gonna love that as much walking into your home. We said staging, I was straight to like stuff everywhere. But you're right. A lot of it's just taking down some of your personal stuff because now I will also say that I love the mindset that hey, you're still living in the house. Can you have a picture of grandma, whoever, up on the thing. A thing that comes up all the time is, you know, can I still have my cross up on the wall? Religious type things, maybe unique to a certain group of peoples. I think that's fine. You hit the nail on the head. Like, you just want the whole wall of pictures. Like, you want people to be able to come in and say, hey, I could picture myself living in this house. The other point I want to make, NAR shows through their stats that National Association homes, homes that are staged sell on average, I believe okay. it's 7% faster, somewhere in that range. Number. They sell faster than homes that aren't staged. Yeah. They typically sell for a little bit more too. A big thing that we've got to think about is it's not the market of two years ago, right? No. Two, three years ago. We're not in that crazy, crazy real estate market. Throw a freaking toy house or whatever on the market and it sells for $100,000. Not the yeah. case anymore. So your house needs to have something done to it to set it apart from the rest of the houses. And if you truly want to get top dollar, your house has to look perfect. And that's the number one thing. Number two. Numero dos. Numero dos. What is it? Clean your freaking house. Please. I want to tell a personal story right now. Oh boy. Most of you watching videos probably know Kyle. He's appeared in a video or two of ours. Has some amazing clients, wonderful people moving here from out of state. And there's a house that really was a good fit for him. Had a lot of pros to it. And I'm telling you, one of the things, I noticed it right away, but I didn't say anything. But they noticed it upon walking in. The house was dirty. And this is a house selling over a million dollars. I'm sure there's a reason that the seller had to do that. Maybe fast move out, something like that. I'm sure there was a reason for it. But nonetheless, when we went into it as prospective buyers, very interested in it, when you see little dust bunnies on the white baseboards. Great example, right? When you see dust bunnies on top of the trim, washing machine got pulled out and the dryer, we all know behind our washing machines and dryers, there's like 14 socks, a pair of underwear, a whole lot of dirt. You gotta clean that stuff up, man. It happens to all of us. We all live in our houses, but man, you gotta sell your house. You gotta clean the thing. Gotta clean it. Gotta clean it. Gotta clean it. A little plug for us, just our real estate team, we have every single house professionally cleaned before we list it. So we don't have to worry about these things. That's right. What's your story, Sam? My very first listing I took, we had this place cleaned for like nine hours. It was a long cleaning. And it was a large bill. Cleaning. It was very lived in, fantastic client. TC way I've ever heard of the yeah. in. <laughs> very lived in, but the house just hadn't been thoroughly deep cleaned in a long time. We listed the home. One of the first comments that I got, because I kind of trusted it was clean, the photos look good. One of the first comments I got was house is dirty. Not a thing you want to see as a listing agent. No good. That gets around. That does. Got back to this guy. So when I got back to that guy, this guy and this guy went to the house together. This guy stayed at the house till the mop and a bucket. 11, 12 <laughs> o'clock at night, the mop and a bucket, cleaning that place up, making sure it sold well. And it did. And it did. Why? Because it, it got cleaned. cleaned. Proof's in the pudding, man. It's one of those things that people overlook, I feel like. Very big. You don't think about cleaning your house, man. I yeah. get it. A lot of stuff going on. A lot of moving parts. So bottom line, make sure it's clean and pristine. Yes. Clean the house. And honestly, if you're working with a good realtor, they should begin the house cleaning for you. Number three, you got to price your home competitively. Wait a minute, Sam. You said if I want to get top dollar, I have to price it competitively? Yes. Not price it as high as I possibly think it could in any way sell for it? No. Crazy talking. Explain to me. So here's the thing. Inventory is a little bit higher in our market today than it was two years 
years ago. Days on market in our market is a little bit higher today sure. than it was two years ago. That means as a seller, two years ago, you were beating people off your front porch with a stick because there were so many people trying yeah. to come into your house. Trying to sell your house. Buyers today, they're more price sensitive yeah. than ever. Why interest rates are a big deal. That's a big part of why. I feel like that has brought the value conversation back for buyers. What am I paying and what am I getting for what I'm paying? Buyers realize that when they see a home down the street that's priced a little better than yours or a little better than another home, they feel that and they understand that. When they're looking at like properties, same square footage, same size, same condition, same updates, same yep. neighborhood, all of those sorts of things. When they're looking at that and they see that one's priced a little bit better than the other one, they're going over to that other one that's yep. priced a little bit better versus two years ago, going to every single home in the neighborhood. Throwing offers out. Just throwing offers out like it was candy. What I find interesting about this is there are a number of people in the real estate business essentially got in in the last three, four years. And this really hasn't been that big of a deal because like Sam said, the market was cuckoo for cocoa puffs. I'm talking about value. I don't know how much it's worth. I'm telling you about the price you should list the house at to make sure it sells and the timeline that works best for you and to maximize your profits. Sometimes people get like, oh man, I don't get that connection. Like I got to price it super competitively, but I want to maximize my profits. And what happens if you go too high, either like Sam said, they go by the neighbor's house instead of your house or your house sits there right now, days on market's coming down, 28 days, media days on market in our area. So now your house is out there, day 29, day 30, day 45, because your price too high. What's the first thing that happens? Low, low offers. And then your house actually ends up selling for less than what it would have. If it would have been priced competitively, it would have sold faster and would have netted you more money at the end of the day. But you go to an auction or you go to bid on an item or something like that. That's really what's taking place in the housing market. Somebody is making a bid to buy an asset. When you get more and more people making a bid to buy that asset, what happens to the price of it? I'm raising my placard. I'm raising my placard. Every time that guy at the podium is hollering 250, 300, it's a competition all yeah. of a sudden. And here's the thing. Two years ago, it didn't mean you could list a cardboard box on the side of a road and there'd be a competition for it. It was absolutely yeah. outrageous. Nowadays, you can't really do that anymore. Instead of buyers competing with buyers, it's sellers competing with sellers. That's a good way to look at it because inventory is low. There's not a lot of people out there selling. You want to make sure that your house is the one that's priced best. And let me say, don't price your house too low. Don't leave money on the table. No. Goodness sake, we're talking about maximizing your profits. We're not talking about pricing too low. We're just talking yeah. about pricing competitively, yep. fair market value, generating more interest, more buzz, more activity. That's what's going to net you more money at the end of the day and therefore maximize your profits. How do you do that? You work with a great realtor who can help you assess the market, assess and values, help you assess values, help you assess the conditions, all those things to do that. And I'll tell a tale of two houses. Oh. It's a Jules Verne reference, right? You know what I mean? We're both cultured gentlemen here. Anywho, I've got a few different clients that are closing this month. With one of those clients in particular, we went through four different offers, four different deals, negotiated on four different deals before we got to our final home. The final home, beautiful home up in Briargate, listed at 565, honestly, probably priced just a little bit lower. We ended up offering, we used an escalation clause ended up settling about 23K above what wow. the listing price was. Ended up offering an appraisal gap along with or an appraisal guarantee with that. And so we ended up, what, 588, house appraised at 595. Clients are happy, sellers are happy, everybody's happy at the end of the day. Why do we have to do that? Well, the realtor priced that home so competitively and priced it to move so quickly. Yeah. They ended up with eight offers, nine offers, including ours. And those offers just pushed each other through the roof and luckily for us with good strategy good timing we were able to still get in there make the best offer still move in with equity at That's the end of the day which is awesome but first two homes that we ended up offering on those realtors absolutely left money on the table they priced it at or probably just above where the value should have been ended up with one two lesser offers than ours at the end of the day left some money on the table they didn't work with a really good realtor who really knows their market really knows conditions, really knows buyers, all those sorts of things. 
and they didn't price their home as competitively as they should have. Priced it high and lost out at the end of the day. I have a bonus one. This is number four then. This is a bonus. Maximize the profits when you sell. Crazy enough, pictures and video today matter. They're huge. I still see Holmes on the MLS with an agent taking a picture with his iPhone and he's in the mirror of the bathroom while he's taking the picture. And this isn't just any old iPhone. It's an iPhone 7. 97% of people, to be exact, are searching online. Make sure your house looks good. Follow all the other stuff we said. It makes sure sure that whoever the heck lists your house for you, if they walk in with the iPhone to take a picture, just tell them to turn around. They should have a professional photographer come in and take pictures. Have a 3D tour of your house. You should have maybe like a guided tour while you're yip yapping about the house walking around. You should have drone footage. They'll say my house doesn't need drone footage, just it does. You're either highlighting something or you're saying where it's at. 250 to $500 and you've got professionally done gorgeous photos of your home. 250 to $500. Is that worth losing out on thousands and thousands thousands of dollars to not get those photos done. I say no. I say no. And that's in Colorado. I own some properties in other areas that I've sold and had the same thing done and the price were even less there than what they're here. So that's it. If you don't want to miss out on money, if you want to sell your home for top dollar in today's market, you can't miss those four things. Do all that stuff. Don't leave money on the table. And if you're concerned about leaving money on the table and you want to know what to do, give us a call. Happy to help.